In the Iraqi city of Mosul, the humanitarian situation is worsening as the U.S.-led anti-terror operation unfolds. We've just received the following footage. Well, this is one of the neighborhoods of eastern Mosul, liberated from uh, Islamic State. Since the anti-terror operation started, locals have been suffering severe shortages of food, water and medical equipment. Uh, the soldiers distributing food uh, struggled to contain the crowds. It's been reported that Iraqi security forces uh, even fired gunshots in order to disperse the desperate mass of people. Well, we can be joined live now by Peter Mara, who's the president of the International Committee of the Red Cross. Thanks for joining us here on RT today, uh, Mr. Mara. Good to have you uh, with us. How would you assess the, the current humanitarian situation uh, in Aleppo? It's been a, a month now since that uh, campaign uh, began. In, in Mosul, apologies, uh, the, the humanitarian situation in Mosul. Well, uh, in the whole region, uh, whether we speak of Aleppo, whether we speak of Mosul, uh, ICRC is very much concerned by the unfolding dynamic of uh, violence, of warfare, uh, of the impact of violence and warfare on people in, uh, in Syria, in Iraq, uh, in Yemen and beyond. And of course there are those emblematic situations and battles ongoing at the present moment, like in Mosul, like in Aleppo and we do our best uh, to respond to the humanitarian crises emerging from this situation. We have uh, pre-positioned uh, our logistics, uh, our staff, uh, our humanitarian goods and do as best as we can to access uh, people in need and to provide water, sanitation services, food, medical services, uh, just to help people survive uh, in Mosul and in many other places of the region. Indeed, and um, just uh, after the, the U.S.-led coalition in Mosul uh, was launched, it was described as a, um, a hybrid war um, involving obviously many third parties where the enemy isn't necessarily uh, defined perhaps as a state. There's various different groups here uh, on all sides. Um, why do you think that's become commonplace and, uh, I mean, what does it actually do to, to hinder the plight of civilians having so many actors at play here? Well, it's a purely mathematical equation also that the more actors we find in the battlefields, the more armed groups we uh, are confronted with, the more difficult it is uh, to negotiate the humanitarian space and, as you know, ICRC for decades and uh, more than one and a half century now has been committed to negotiate consensually with all parties concerned the humanitarian space so more actors means more complicated uh, negotiations about uh, a humanitarian space if these actors are unstructured uh, it's even more complicated and complex this is a reality with which we are confronted in today's warfare, uh, be it in the Middle East, but also in other contexts. Uh, we have uh, uh, more than two actors uh, to negotiate with, and this is, of course, adding to the complexity uh, of a, any humanitarian operation today. It's uh, hindering the security for our staff. It's uh, making our lives uh, more complicated, but it's the reality with which we are confronted today. Indeed. And does your organization have any information or any data about the number of uh, civilian victims killed in, in various airstrikes around the city uh, of Mosul? Is enough being done to, to uh, minimize that number? Well, we, uh, we don't know about uh, exact numbers. Our first priority is to respond uh, to those people we have access to, we know about, and uh, uh, that's our first preoccupation. We will, uh, as events unfold, we will have more clarity. It is uh, our continued uh, concern in today's battlefields, be them Syria, Iraq again, or Yemen, that uh, in particular in air combat operations that uh, uh, the precaution and distinction between civilians and militaries are preserved and this is a continued worry we have and something we engage with uh, all those who are engaged in either artillery warfare or in aerial warfare 
it's a big challenge today to have those principles of international humanitarian law of distinguishing between civilians and militaries uh, respected uh, in those modern forms of warfare. Uh, we certainly uh, believe that in all the contexts that we know, more has to be done in order to be closer to respect uh, of those basic principles of humanitarian law. Indeed, and of course, um, as you mentioned earlier, just across the, the border, there's a very uh, serious situation developing in the Syrian city of uh, Aleppo as well. There's accusations on both sides of uh, civilians being hit with shelling, with airstrikes. But uh, on the other hand, Russia has also set up corridors uh, several times for civilians, uh, even militants, to leave the rebel-held uh, east of the city. But people have been stopped from getting out. What else can be done to help those, those people trapped uh, in that side of Aleppo? Well, it is one of uh, our big concerns when we have limitations to access that uh, we need to bring parties together and we need to reach out to all those in control of territory and civilian populations in order to find the consensual arrangements which allows us to deliver humanitarian assistance and, uh, and protection services. And it is unfortunate that in many of the conflicts we are observing that the civilian population is taking hostage basically uh, of the disagreement between parties uh, to let humanitarian workers, humanitarian organizations like the ICRC do their work and this, uh, this happens uh, in many contexts uh, in many contexts of the region in Syria again as well as in many other uh, in many other situations so we will have to engage with all those who have influences on the parties on the ground in order to make their utmost and to use their power and their ability to influence actors so that these actors recognize the needs of people to get humanitarian assistance. I think uh, at the present moment we don't have sufficient cooperation and sufficient engagement by those who have an influence on all the parties in Syria to nudge the parties of the conflict into better behavior, better respect, uh, more forthcoming engagement with humanitarian actors, but also more concern about the civilian populations, which is the first victim of this conflict. And just, just briefly, Mr. Mara, in terms of the broad overview of the conflict here, obviously it's been going on for five years in, in Syria, in Iraq as well, and any conflict will mean uh, civilian casualties, uh, whoever is conducting shelling, airstrikes, etc., civilians will suffer ultimately. Yet nobody sees any alternative, at least at the moment, uh, to violence to try to stop terrorism, groups such as ISIS, al-Nusra, etc. How, how is it possible to help ordinary people uh, in this kind of situation, in this quagmire and, and cycle of violence? Well, uh, our uh, starting point is that we shouldn't accept uh, civilian victims in conflict as uh, just a given. We have to do everything we can to minimize those civilian victims. At the end of the day, I agree with you. We cannot uh, avoid warfare which will not eventually have also an impact uh, on civilian people. But uh, I think, uh, again, we need uh, better cooperation more powerful engagement of all parties to the conflict to create those humanitarian space to allow civilians to flee to places where they feel more secure we need to have uh, orderly uh, evacuation roads we need to have access for humanitarian organizations we need the militaries and the armed groups uh, to uh, take much more precaution in the use of force we see with great concerns that uh, today's conflicts are moving to urban areas, to, urban, to, to cities where civilians are much more exposed to the impact of explosive, of bombardments, of artillery. And I think there is uh, a lot to do in order to minimize the impact uh, of this warfare, even if we can't avoid. We do not have to accept and we should never accept that any victim is just a fatality. It is not. 
we can do more and I think it is important that all those uh, uh, who are committed to international humanitarian law to humanitarianism do more uh, in order to do the best to protect civilians. It is an absurdity in today's conflict that civilians have become the first and foremost victims of conflict and the, the best or the most securest situation in a conflict today is to be a soldier. So this equation has to change again. Indeed. Peter Maurer, President of the International Committee of the Red Cross, thank you for your time today uh, giving us that update on those situations in Mosul and Aleppo.